Lovely. Um, so the workshop um, followed on from the, um, the symposium in November. Um, it was also held at the Research School of um, Social Sciences at ANU Canberra. Um, and the aim of the workshop was to develop a program for how we can move forward um, from the current state of Australian vocabularies towards a future state that meets next generation vocab requirements. That is particularly vocabularies that are fair and well governed. Come on, regress. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, So the focus questions um, to help us um, progress, um, progress this agenda and aim were focused around um, thinking about what is our current vocabulary landscape and what does it, <clears throat> what does it need to look like in the future? What would constitute a fair, op um, the optimum future state and how we could work towards that future state? Uh, what we might need to do to be able to um, harmonise and converge our thinking and how we might achieve sustainability for longevity um, of, of critical services within the vocab landscape so that they will be there within five, 10 plus years time. Um, so the participants um, was an invited workshop due to a number of practical um, constraints and meaningful you know, input and engagement with the group size that was uh, reasonable and could be handled. <laughs> so the invited participants were from across the thematic areas um, based broadly on the ARDC thematic research data commons areas of people, planet, um, Hassan Indigenous. And we also had some representatives from generic cross domain areas um, such as services, tooling, um, tooling provision and geospatial areas. There were, now I did count, I didn't go back and check exactly guys, but 21 participants uh, with organisational and research affiliations with a number of, um, of organisations, infrastructures and initi initiatives there. Uh, the workshop structure, roughly it was, uh, well, it was very fluid. So, it, you know, met the needs of the discussion as um, the day, um, the days flowed along. Um, and it was facilitated by Kiran, which he did a great job and he's here today. So you might be able to hear from Kiran uh, once this is finished up here. So we had a context setting and mapping of the current landscape in day one. And then um, Thursday, we did some planning and had some planned discussions to be able to um, talk about what do we want to you know, form a roadmap and what does that look like? What could the next steps be and how will we spend our Friday? And on the Friday, we planned, um, we did start um, drafting a uh, roadmap and planning a path, pathway forward, um, which we'll discuss with you today. And it was very, as I said, very hands-on and um, fluid workshop. Uh, so day one was context setting and mapping the landscape. Um, the idea was to collectively map um, have discussions around the Australian vocabulary ecosystem as um, we all had experienced and understood it from our domains and discuss relevant international um, engagements that were important to and across our domains. And the intent of this um, mapping was to help identify what's available now, um, services and relationships and how they meet, um, do not or could meet Australia's next um, generation vocab requirements. So this included requirements within the domain as well as cross domain and generic vocabularies, infrastructure, and um, we had a good discussion um, about some relevant documentation and communities that we engaged with as well. So uh, day one, um, we had introductions and we had a nice presentation scene setting from Adrian Burton um, who discussed um, you know, ARDC and their role, um, a little bit of the importance of vocabularies and why we were all meeting and what we hoped to get out of the workshop and the rough, the rough structure of um, 
the flow of the days. So we had a uh, then had a presentation by Andrew Hancock from uh, Stats New Zealand, who's a principal analyst and chair of the UN Committee of Experts on International Statistical Classifications. And he presented um, some inspiring work to us on the modernisation of statistical classifications, um, combining you know, technology and um, partnership working together um, within New Zealand also um, across um, you know, being adopted and adapted uh, across countries, jurisdictions as well. So that was a nice scene setting, gave us plenty to talk about, talk and think and reflect on. And he did present to, the talk is not available at the moment, um, but it was quite similar from memory to the AVSIG meeting that um, content wise that um, Andrew presented. So if you missed that meeting, you might like to go back and have a look at uh, that one. So, um, we then broke into um, thematic areas of people, planet, has and indigenous, as well as generic, sorry, generic people, <laughs> broadly applicable across theme, including geospatial. And um, we had a number of things to sit and review. We had a look at the responses um, of the research birds of feather, where we asked um, folks to focus mostly on the question around uh, what's the current vocabulary landscape? How did they find it? and the reflections from the vocabulary symposium that um, Rowan shared, uh, the results of that and the breakdown of um, those word clouds, the main themes we could see coming out. Um, we discussed where um, we understood within our domains, Australians were mostly uh, utilising international vocabularies, um, vocabulary resources and um, where it should where it is appropriate to have local, national and international vocabularies and use those and whether there was any consensus within um, within the group there. So this session focused on, this discussion was of stress was mostly on vocabularies, um, not the services, which follows in the next. Um, now throughout, we did have a list of vocabularies, which was started up in um, the symposium. Um, that folks, the 200 or so participants and the ones in this workshop could um, contribute the vocabularies that they um, believed or saw or used that were critical um, within their domains and um, just see whether there was multiple versions of or whether there, there was any um, important that we saw missing. But that wasn't particularly a focus of um, an activity. The, um, the worksheet was just um, run you know up and available throughout and that is still um, that worksheet's still available that excel so folks can still add to it and we can share those links sorry i can't pop the links into the chat because <laughs> um i can't see my speaker notes um so activity four we uh, focused on infrastructures and again we broke out into thematic groups we discussed um vocabulary repositories. Um, oh, that's meant to be number one, actually. So vocabulary repositories, how many are, are there? Um, are there assets fair? How many portals there are? Again, are they fair? Vocabulary advocates, I mean, vocabulary aggregators in Australia, um, RVA being one. Are there any others, systems that managed and edited vocabularies? Um, I'll touch on that in the next slide. And um, did anybody have, were there any connections between the um, service aggregators, portals, etc., with any major international efforts? And were there any international equivalents that we preferred or did use for certain purposes instead of uh, Australian specifically hosted ones? And um, were there any, did anyone see any glaring gaps that um, they may have seen compared with? The offerings of um, or scope of international infrastructures. Um, so on to the back with the question, how many systems are there to edit and manage vocabularies and what are their sustainability um, and their stability? I'll just touch on that we didn't review that in detail. Some of you um, attended the um, Dagstool um, Down Under workshop last year and remember that um, a workshop output for spreadsheet um, tooling um, was collated. I did see uh, Nick and Edmund in the 
um, attending here today. I know that they did work on that and others uh, as well. A few here might may have, um, so we didn't go into the tooling too much. Um, some notes from Rowan were that um, he touched base with ARDC that they'd support the maintenance or support such an output if it was demonstrated as valuable to the community, but we hadn't particularly received any strong feedback one way or the other around um, that list and particularly um, if it is of interest to the Australian and or international community, uh, where would it be hosted, how would it be maintained and Leslie had approached um, VSIG. Um, the vocabulary is, what is that? <laughs> Vocabulary service, something, something interest group. Um, they're scoping uh, what it might look like in the next few years and activities, and I'm not really sure where they got to. So if anyone has any interest in maintaining or has views on that tooling list, um, be in touch with us and uh, through the ABC group would like to hear about it. So generally we reported back on that whole wide range of topics, had um, touchback ins and um, the views, ideas, general themes, et cetera, broadly um, were intended to shape, you know, the important content, um, objectives, outcomes, et cetera, that a roadmap would need to touch on if we went that way. Um, day two, um, the groups were across domains, so we formed across domain groups. And again, we had discussions and activities which were aimed to inform the roadmap um, planning for day for day three. Um, we started off by reviewing and scoping documents that could influence um, the vision and the objectives of the roadmap. They could either support or constrain. So um, we looked at um, briefly groups and communities of practice that are also working in vocabularies here and internationally we needed to consider. And um, yeah, we did, we started um, a summary, a list, a summary of um, key guiding documents, groups and communities of practice, including um, the quotes and excerpts of um, relating specifically to the support or the need for vocabularies. And I believe it was Leslie did an excellent job there. So we'll be happy to share that in some output or form in the next month or two or going forward. We'll discuss that in some of them in the next slide. Um, we asked participants if they knew of any other documents that could inspire the roadmap and there was a number, um, both nationally and internationally. And at a glance, they did all, they did all mostly appear to support rather than constrain the case for vocabularies into the future. Uh, though, though it is positive, um, some also inform or would inform vocabulary um, best practice, things like privacy acts, code of ethics, um, etc. So there, there is some um, some of the influential documents, and of course, it doesn't. In, this um, slide actually doesn't include the ones that the participants added. Also, so folks, if you know of any. Um, you could flick them our way and we'll discuss how the community can um, contribute to these efforts towards the end of the presentation. Day two, we so we also um, touched on current planning documents. Some of you are at the R RVA review. We, um, couple, oh, gee, that was, that was a while ago back, wasn't it? I can't remember what year, 2019 or something. And the roadmap was the product. The out, an output of that. So we pulled out um, a key, there were some key quotes for that. We didn't dive into that too much, but it's important to consider in the um, building of a roadmap. And there's a link to that there. And communities of practice, OSIG and Oldwig, um, their role. And there was a couple of others that we could, um, could and possibly should engage with. We then worked through a cross domain scenario that, um, a virus had come into Northern Australia that it was causing people to die. Uh, that sounds a little too familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> so spreading fast amongst the population, it could be transmitted by air or animal. So we got into um, domain, cross domain groups, panels of experts to save the world from imminent doom. 
so we discussed the role of vocabularies, obviously, um, advice on the to determine the environmental social impact determinants of disease. So which vocabularies would be required to assist in the scenario and which are the barriers to linking across infrastructures and uh, were they social, technical, technical governance, etc. Um, so the aim of this was to stimulate discussion to feed in to the roadmap around cross domain vocabulary use. So how can we use vocabularies to um, advance those great big ticket items and uh, big wicked problems, I guess you'd say. Um, we did some stakeholder mapping, customers, 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 suppliers, and suppliers, suppliers. And as I said uh, to somebody, only a group of uh, vocabulary managers and etc. cetera, and ontologists would come up with such a comprehensive list here. Um, and then we started, we did some, um, oh, now this might've been getting into day three. Hmm. No, maybe day two still. So we mapped out everyone um, taking on board the activities of the last the, um, the couple of days. We pulled out main themes that we thought should be included in a roadmap, um, key features, and they were popped up on um, a wall and moved into um, kind of key groupings or themes, you know, starting at the top front of the document intro content and um, basically areas that of focus um, to improve work towards our vision, um, outcome areas that we believe we should focus on came into key areas of standards, norms, culture, relationships, infrastructure and technology, skills and policy. So the next, the last day we started a pathway forward. Um, so in basic agreement that, well, okay, well, let's begin this roadmap. There's value in it. Um, we began to flesh out those ideas from the day before. Um, we split into our cross domain groups and started um, drafting from some points and reported back on how the basic content, how we found that and the structure. Then we dis uh, discussed a pathway, um, a pathway forward. So Friday was a half day. Um, we wanted to establish an agenda for how will we further um, further the vocabulary ecosystem in Australia to meet our future reuse requirements, particularly across domain. We discussed, um, obviously there was an interest in developing a roadmap for vocabularies and semantic resources in Australia amongst the folks in the room. Um, we believe we thought, well, the initial working group to continue on this rough draft could be um, and would be, say, this month, the uh, workshop attendees. So to continue on with that work, we started um, up until December 2023. Uh, oh, 2022, look at that. We've got a whole year to draft. 23, not ambitious at all. One month, we're going to continue on with our draft and then we'll take it out to the community and the broader um, all you, you know, you folks here today are probably interested in providing comment and contributing. So we'd like to talk about that. Um, the, the time frame we thought one to f one year outcomes and five year were um, tangible and um, impactful. And um, we discussed the need for a broader advoca advocacy group to drive and take, you know, home for this roadmap to take it take it forward, main, you know, work on it, maintain it, et cetera. And AVSIG was actually flagged between the participants as an appropriate group. Um, Old Wig's a little more specific around government focused agencies. So I would like your th thoughts on that there. Um, yeah, uh, there, there was thought that it would be great to release this roadmap at the time that there was a document coming out from the Department, oh, Department of Education um, that Adrian did touch on, um, but that will be coming out next year. So I can't remember the exact name of those recommenda recommendations or scoping, so that scoping activity, but um, I think the plan was to finish a roadmap by kind of mid next year at the um, latest and 
folks could probably comment on that that were in the workshop. Um, and I think that's about it.